let's start our ninth week of uh, classes and that is on the topic of searching and uh, yeah uh, I chose that topic because it, it somehow fits into a lot of the uh, educational background that you would get as computer scientists and, and quite often you have some data structure or some data somewhere and you are sort of searching for some uh, values in it and maybe some like searching for closest path or something in some like map structure or even if it's not a map, you can ju just sort of like look at a lot of data somewhere and then search through that just to get the one value. And uh, even though it's not entirely related with a lot of uh, mathematical things, I guess, or, or stuff that we were doing uh, previous classes, I think it still relates to the like algorithmic parts of the class and maybe the data sciences parts of the of this course. So. Yeah, I, I still wanted to kind of fit this in before we uh, before we step into the uh, final bits, which will be next week's, which will be, for example, vectors and matrices and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so today, what we will be doing is uh, is searching in all sorts of uh, in all sorts of data types. Uh, we will be searching in some sort of maps and games. Uh, we will be searching in some abstract trees of possible choices we can take uh, and then uh, there will be a little bit of like bonus uh, information on uh, on how some of the uh, super specialized fast algorithms work so something as a star because you will see that it's a little bit slow in some senses in some sense and so uh, to have it all run in uh, global scale really fast and really on huge maps so something like Google Maps, for example, you have to have some smart algorithms there. So this will be one that I will be talking about a little bit. Okay. So uh, searching for path. Well, what does this practically mean? Uh, uh, so there are these are sort of like few examples that we can see uh, that we probably know already. Uh, some of them. So this is some uh, searching on maps. Uh, you can imagine that uh, behind this there is some sort of like a, a abstracted representation of all the streets in the world on one sort of graph and on that graph you are moving from like one node to another node jumping the things and so if you look at these connections you, you do get these like uh, nodes some things like instructions here saying you okay take uh, from here to here take this thing this this road this is high road and maybe that's a bit which already takes an hour or something well this is silly because i'm planning from czech to, to uk but anyway like you you can imagine it from uh, in a in a map of streets inside a city and uh then uh the different streets would be the sort of edges of that graph and the uh, crossroads would be sort of points inside inside that graph and so we are uh you are finding a path on a map but in reality somewhere in the computer land you are also just searching like a, a shortest path on a graph so this is all which would be happening here another case would be or another example would be uh, sort of path finding in games so ai in games so uh, so for example if you are doing some ai or something for these uh, for these uh, ghosts in pac-man or, or whatever other games well right you kind of want uh, them to at every step sort of figure out uh, what their pathing will be and uh, it depends on the, the on how complicated the AI is but like at some moment you just want it to go from here uh, from its position to you and so it has to sort of figure out which is the best road to take or the shortest one and so this is something that you can uh, sort of check for one by one uh, one enemy by one target sort of or you can uh, do something like this when uh, in some more advanced games where you have like a bunch of tanks on a map and they need to get through like one small path road somewhere I don't know I don't even know which game I'm talking about but in some cases you sort of need to plan for uh, not just one agent moving uh, the agent being ghost uh, but a bunch of agents uh, and for example like the the, the computer uh, NPCs of some tanks or something if, if you tell them hey all of you move here uh, and they have to uh, find the path through uh, some like uh, through some bottle like in some older games they're going one by one and it's terrible but in some new, newer games you would see that they are sort of like moving maybe finding a way how to fit two 
and then sort of, sort of like figuring out that, that as well. And so uh, these like on 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 the side of the games, we sort of see what these differences would be. But somewhere behind this, there is some differences that this would make for the algorithms that are used if you are planning just for like one agent or if you are planning for uh, multiple agents that need to coordinate with each other. And uh, I think I even had a course called like, or there was like a research field of multiple agent planning or something. And yeah, that becomes useful. But basically, it's just these same things, but scaled up into much larger areas. And the task that they have to do is, is much more complicated as well. And the, the the agents there become like drones that you are trying to, I don't know, uh, program that they are uh, reporting on some like, I don't know, some uh, <laughs> piece of important infrastructure or something, right? And so uh, what we will even talk about today will be relatively simple, all of that, uh, but uh, there is a lot of like applications that this can be useful. Well, and so the last bit that we are getting into uh, is this uh, decision tree uh, visualization. So this is uh, the comic, basically it's talking about the problem with Wikipedia. You start on the article of Tacoma Narrow Bridges uh, and then you are uh, <laughs> sort of going from there, clicking on links and you get to uh, all the way from like uh, 24 hour analog dia dial into wet t-shirt contest. Well, so uh, what it is uh, comics is making joke about is the uh, is the fact that lots of the data that we have in in our <laughs> in the world uh, or in these maps are uh, in these sort of like uh, represented data sources uh, into trees uh, that it branches a lot and then uh, you can basically get from anywhere to anywhere in just a bunch of clicks and so for example, if, if you know that you are starting in this one node, let's say, uh, and that you actually want to find wet t-shirt contest, uh, well, <laughs> uh, there is a... It, it's, it's tricky to kind of say, okay, what is the path between uh, narrow bridges all the way to t-shirts, right? So, like, the task may become find the path there, or the task might become to uh, find if there is a, an is a path. And so uh, this is a joke with Wikipedia, but uh, you can imagine that this tree is, for example, uh, us playing chess against the computer, or two, two AIs are playing chess against each other. And these uh, different uh, sort of children for this node, so, so the, the, the nodes under this one, are the possible moves that the AI can take. So this would be like, I don't know, pawn on... Uh, b6 spawn on b7 etc etc so there is a lot of branching there and the task them becomes uh, even more complicated because then there is a, another ai which is making its own decisions so it's actually more complicated uh, problem than just searching for a path but searching for a path is just part of it uh, in that situation you would also be sort of uh, trying to predict what the opponent could do and what it will probably do because it's the most uh, advantageous for it. And so what you are actually searching for is the uh, states, uh, <laughs> are the states where you uh, end up in, a, in some win condition, right? And so if you have this really complicated branching tree, uh, you can imagine that this search is really difficult. And so in that cases, again, you will need to have some uh, smart algorithms that will get you through it. Otherwise, you will uh, spend more than millennia on just parsing through these things. Okay, so this is like a small intro into the practical uh, applications of searching. And... Mm -hmm. So let's illustrate a little bit what are the possible questions that we want might want to ask and so in in those previous cases uh, you are asking uh, sort of for the possible paths that there are between the starting point and the ending point and so maybe you also want uh, all of them basically maybe you want to know all the possible paths that there are uh, maybe you don't care about the path itself so uh, you don't care about uh, even saving the path you just want to know can I get there uh, is the is the state sort of I win in chess reachable at all, and so that that is like a boolean information for you telling you okay, uh, this is a game I want to play because I can get there, or this is a game I cannot 
win or something. Or it might not be winning chess, but it actually might be searching for data, right? So you might want to find that state and then return it. And so in that case, searching is not in uh, in game decisions, but it's more or less in like a data set which has been saved on some tree. And in that case, you don't care about all, at all about the path that took you there, but maybe you just need to sort of get the state and then get it back. So, so find the one node which works. Well, and so the even more, maybe more complicated uh, than these two uh, would be to find the shortest or the cheapest path. And then uh, what you need to ask in that situation is uh, how are you counting this uh, shortest or cheapest? Well, what, is, what does it mean? And we sort of know uh, that from using our uh, GPS when, I don't know, uh, navigating a car or even in like navigating ourselves in a city. Uh, if you go from this station to that station or place on a map, uh, it will give you several uh, possible options and you sort of want to get the shortest one, but maybe there are some other uh, sort of criteria that you might want to consider. So in a, in a car routing scenario, you would care about uh, the path being shortest, but also maybe fastest, uh, so that the, I don't know, the, <laughs> the speeds on the roads are uh, to, together accumulating that, I don't know, maybe the not super short path, but slightly longer path will actually be faster because you can take uh, much higher speeds there or you can consider some stuff which is sort of like uh, evaluating the, the road segments by how nice they are and stuff so uh, you want to uh, give a uh, bike user a path which is the sort of nicest for him but at the same time also really short so uh, at that moment you have a bunch of criteria and you're sort of like uh, maybe juggling between them, maybe you have a mix of those values and you're sort of like maybe letting the user to choose. Well, yeah. And so this is the uh, type of task where you sort of want the path, but you also have to, while parsing this strange data structure that you have or the map, you also are saving the uh, uh, how much it took you there, so sort of the cost on the road. And you are adding to that and maybe using that value to sort of try to find shortcuts and stuff. Okay. And uh, so uh, an illustration of this in, in, uh, in computer land, uh, which is uh, some which, which is something which would work relatively easy in PC, right? Something like this, having a 2D map. You are here, and you want to get here. And uh, I mean, you can start doing this with like a pen, and then you might get there, but you also might not. And I. There might be more paths as well, and I'm not taking the best one, and I might be... This is completely pointless, but yeah, I got there actually, <laughs> right? So yeah, this is pointless part of the presentation. However, we are sort of drawn to these to like uh, <laughs> solve these puzzles as well. Well, so how would you actually uh, do this in a PC? How would you uh, programmatically represent the path and then how, uh, the map? the map <laughs> and how would you uh, maybe mathematically represent or algorithmically represent how how are you like how can you move from one state to another so taking these uh, different steps and so uh, yeah for a human it's easy to sort of explain like oh yeah you have to go from here to here so we are sort of trying this direction I guess but how you, can you code that uh, is the real uh, question here and so uh, yeah, there is an illustration of how that generally works uh, in sort of uh, all, all sorts of possible applications and so all sorts of possible uh, scenarios of games. So let's say that here we have a sort of like uh, we are playing chess and this is us. Uh, maybe we are just playing chess with no, no one else. So this is just us maybe making the moves without anyone else touching the board, I guess. Uh, it's a simplification. But uh, let's say that this is the decision tree that we are sort of going through and we want to find something. Or we are actually on a map, so something that we saw on the previous slide. Uh, but uh, yeah, we don't really see around, each, uh, around ourselves. We don't uh, see the whole map. We are sort of going step by step. Well, so in any of these cases, it all starts uh, on being in like one current space. Basically, we are always in just like one space uh, that we are testing right now. Uh, we always can look around and see what are the possible moves to take. Uh, well, so basically, programmatically, we have this saved as like an, maybe a dictionary. And so if I ask, hey, what are the next possible moves for uh, for 
to go from start and it will return to me like okay these are the three possible moves or in this case i would have to maybe code it as a small function and then check always the nearby uh maps parts and then say hey this this brown bit maybe this is a ball so i cannot really go there so there are three options to go here well so behind any of these searching algorithms you would have this right you would be starting in a state you could ask for the possible next moves and then the sort of biggest uh, question there uh, is the one to uh, to give you the answer for which step to take so which of those possible moves to actually take well so we will dig into that deeper later but uh, generally speaking this is an outline that will be repeated again and again and so we repeat this sort of procedure we have some some like uh, I guess algorithm written for this state to say okay I'm in one state and I want to go to the next state and okay I will always choose I don't know maybe the first one or something and then uh, or magically just directly go for the win well uh, and then we are sort of repeating this one function calling it again and again which is evaluating our sort of uh, thinking about the situation and, and uh, we are slowly going through the uh, through all the branches and maybe we can also keep the, in, in mind that okay we have already been here so maybe we have some list of visited places already and so in the new possible moves we can sort of ignore the ones which would take us somewhere where we have already been and maybe also like it really depends if we care about the shortest path or not because maybe uh, if, if there if we need to take care of about the shortest path in that case we are not only keeping if we visited the place but with uh, how much cost we visited it and so if we suddenly find that there is a shortcut somewhere uh, we actually want to override the already visited place if we got there faster but uh, all of this complexity becomes maybe uh, comes with like uh, task specific problems so we are sort of just repeating this uh, this procedure and so yeah we get somewhere basically we win well this was a simpler scenario where I was uh, it's just choosing the right choice here always and then just going down here always well uh, in general case we sort of want to walk through the map with all the possible choices so basically we don't know if the queen takes the king is, is here uh, we sort of really want to explore all the bits of the map and the same applies here as well we would probably have to just branch everywhere and then sort of like go uh, from the circle and then start getting around and around and sort of figure out where to go uh, You all may almost might say that you sort of have to brute force it uh, Which is definitely true for the simple cases. You basically just have to go through every one of them Yeah so uh, Let's illustrate it on some on some videos later as well, but uh, Let's look at this uh, grid example and this is again some labyrinth on the map and uh, we can sort of maybe start describing what can we see here so we have some starting point here uh, yeah this one is not written here actually well anyway uh, we have some goal point which is this one uh, we already visited a bunch of those pl places right we have already expo explored all the ways everything we started here and then sort of uh, we went around 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 dead end dead end all of the dance again and then we got all the way to here and so this is a new possible move to take and we got to here this is again a new possible move to take and this is a possible new move to take and so you can imagine that uh, we are sort of keeping track of everything that we found not to return to uh, uh, the same place but at visiting new places we are always asking so what are the new possible places to get from there and so we will actually see that this one will fail this one will fail but this one will continue here and then it will continue branching as well so yeah uh, I shouldn't really just talk about this there is a video of this so I wanted to describe what we see first and then uh, we can just play it so it will start here and then go for this one and hopefully maybe something's running right yeah okay so yeah we can see there is some algorithm behind it right which is doing this which is sort of almost like flooding the uh, the fields, and this is the screenshot I was then showing, and we can see how this uh, slowly goes over the whole map. Basically, uh, there is 
In this case, there is no smart way how to do it other than brute force everything. So you really have to just flood everything and then eventually you will get... Uh, so it, somewhere in the background at every step, it's always asking, am I in the end? No. Am I in the end? No. Am I in the end? No. So uh, all of these are being checked for if they are the goal tile. Well, and so over time, it will eventually get to the one and then it will end. And uh, if we have saved those uh, paths, we can also backtrack it and tell, okay, this is the optimal road to get from the start to the end. And so this, this works uh, by flooding the, the map, let's say. There is another uh, possibility. Uh, there are another possibilities, actually. One of them, uh, which we saw right now, would be sort of going into the breath. So that would be flooding the, the new tiles. Uh, anyway, so yeah, let's start about this. Uh, there are two sort of approaches. One is to go for uh, depth, and one is to go for breath. <laughs> and uh, the, it is influenced uh, by the order of visited tiles. Uh, so in the breath, when we sort of branch, when we explore new tiles, we will first explore all the uh, all the options that we uh, shown. So we will go uh, sort of flooding from start node to sort of like the neighboring uh, bits. Whereas in in a depth search, we are sort of going for the the first one, let's say always. And so when we branch, we will always take the first one, and then. Uh, when we go there, we again branch and then see the first one again, 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 and then sort of repeat this. Uh, I think I have a yeah. So this was the breath first. Uh, if I will play it again, maybe some nice location like here. We are always flooding, sort of the uh, so always sort of like figuring out the the next possible moves from the start, uh, and then if there are two possibilities which have the same. Uh, distances from the start, we are always checking all of them at once, right? Right. At least it looks like we are doing it at once. I think we are basically going one by one. So first this one, then 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 this one. Somewhere behind in the algorithm, they might have sped it up in the for the animation. I think. Well, so this was the breath first, uh, whereas the depth first. Uh, this is a broken video, but it's just because it was converted. I think it will. No, let's see. Okay. So this should work. Okay, so we have started somewhere, uh, and we are sort of taking just one road. So we uh, we are all always exploring new bits of the map, but we uh, don't really check all of them at once. We are always going for the first sort of like I don't know, always third left basically. Yeah. So this is just an illustration. Wow. Okay. Nice. Oh my god. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, bread first. Clear walls. Let's let's make a maze. Nice. Okay, so let's thank you for the link. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, let's first search the or use the breath first. So this should be sort of going wider, 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 and then eventually we hope that it will actually find a solution. <laughs> and. This might take some time, and then oh yeah, it find it found it. Uh, if we clear the path and then try best, oh best first. Oh, they don't have a uh, depth first in this situation, right? Because now we are searching for the shortest path. Uh, so if I were to search for the uh, depth first, it would just go here. And then it would go here, <laughs> and it would go here, and it would just like sort of go for the next uh, first bit as well. So maybe the uh, best, uh, the depth first search is actually used maybe more for uh, iterating through the data rather than uh, rather than searching from a map like this. Let's illustrate it here on this uh, on this tree. Uh, so this is a tree. Uh, tree is defined as a uh, structure where we have some initial node, and every node has its children. These are called. And uh, when uh, the tree might have so, like as many branching, uh, it can have as many children as possible. So the, this is the number of children sort of rep uh, represents the branching of it. So uh, if we uh, this is branching with strength of three, let's say, so it has three children, uh, and the, some of the nodes actually don't have any uh, following trees, 
or following uh, children, and these are called leaves. Well, so there is some terminology, but we will be not we will not really be using that much uh, this terminology. So we will just be talking about nodes and children. So I guess in this situation, our task is relatively simple. Uh, we have this data structure of a tree, and we want to uh, iterate through all of it, and then eventually probably also get this node as like to find it and then return it, but. We don't really uh, care about this path being the shortest one, uh, which in this tree also it doesn't really make sense because uh, the only path that you can get there is the shortest one because there is no cycles. If we had a connection from here to here and here to here or here to here, basically if we had some shortcuts in it, it would no longer be a tree. It would become a, uh, a graph with nodes which are connected. Uh, so basically, uh, what differentiates them is that the tree uh, doesn't have any cycles, any sort of uh, ways how you could get from here back to itself uh, while taking other paths. So that would be a cycle. Uh, and so graph is something which is just everything connected with everything if you want, or there are some holes with connections as well. And so trees are generally more easier for searching into, uh, searching through. Well, and so. What we can imagine behind this is maybe a structure where each of these is sort of maybe... Right, yeah, maybe each of these nodes was a document that someone was editing and then uh, they sent it to their mates and they started editing it again and then uh, maybe saved it into two versions and then started editing this one and then saved it into two versions again. And so maybe what uh, this represents is maybe we, are, we want to sort of find in all of this, did they actually get to, I don't know, maybe this is an empty document or something. Did they get frustrated and deleted the whole document? So we want to find the one which is like this. <laughs> so uh, the task here is to somehow parse through this. So somehow go through it. And so on this relatively simple uh, demo, we will show the differences between the depth first searching and bre breadth first searching. And then uh, see what is the difference there. Okay. Uh, so let's start with the depth first search. And so uh, in that case, when we are branching, uh, we will always go for the first option. So let's see what this means. Uh, this means that in the first stage, uh, in the sort of when the current is here, the current state is this one, we are branching into these three. And so in that one, we will always go for the first uh, discovered node, the newest one basically. Yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily mean the first option from all the possibilities, but it means that uh, from all the new ones, we are always exploring the newest, mo most one uh, first. So we, we would go here for the next step. So let's go here. Uh, so in this case, the numbers sort of represent how, uh, what was the order of us going through this tree. Uh, and we eventually want to get here, but we will sort of get there anyway. But we sort of still want to show what the parsing through this tree would look like. Okay, so in this case, uh, we are then again, sort of we revealed these two new possible moves and we want to get into the newest one first. So let's go, this will be this one. So this is our two, then this is our three. And when we are not branching anymore, we are not exp like showing any new ones, we sort of get back into the uh, second to last, or second to, uh, yeah, not the newest ones that we would explore, but the newest one from the previous step. So we would go here maybe. And then the same, we are sort of branching up. So like there is nothing to branch here. So we have to give up and get, go up. Uh, this was the dead end that we sort of found that we have to go up. And then it will, it will go here. And then eventually uh, we are sort of again looking at the first situation. Uh, and then again looking at the uh, first option here. Then this option here. Uh, then again, checking these two nodes and then uh, going into the newer one from them or the first one from them. And the same applies. We have explored new branches here, so let's explore them first. So yeah, we'll get into the, uh, this node as ninth. Uh, by the way, we found it, but uh, let's do just uh, to sort of illustrate how we are processing the rest of the, uh, the tree. We will then go here and then eventually all the way to here. So this was the depth first searching. And so if I will run it really fast, uh, I am going sort of really, so I, I, I'm shooting out into the deepest corners first, and then 
yeah, th that is the, the situation. Whereas the second version will be breadth first, and you will see that we will be exploring in a little bit different way. And so let's see it here. Uh, the uh, the sort of decision-making process is that when we branch into three more options, we will always explore the, the ones we have uh, revealed before, before going into some, something new. And so in this case, we have explored, uh, I mean, we have revealed these three, but we have nothing uh, from previous uh, stages, so we will just explore these three. So yeah, let's go one. We have now uh, explored the, I mean, discovered these new steps, but we will always uh, explore the ones we revealed before first. So what this means actually, and this graph is going here, and then going here, uh, in, at which moment we are discovering these two new nodes. Well, so we don't have anything in the two sort of layers here, we will go into these, and then we will start here, and then basically all, all the way fill these. And so, uh, yeah, at this moment we all already have discovered, actually like, at this moment we have discovered this uh, as a new possible moves, but in the priority list or something, we are sort of at 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 attaching these uh, with lower priority than these, because these ones are sort of the ones that we saw before. So this is the way how the uh, breath first goes. Rather than focusing on the new ones, you focus on the older revealed nodes. So let's continue with them. Then we go to the ones that we explore later. And then basically, yeah, hooray, we found it. And just to illustrate the end, we would get here. And so uh, for me to again run this fast, basically we are not going depth first, which was going first here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here. We are sort of going layer by layer. So first here, then here, then here, and then all the way here. And so if I run it fast, first layer first, second layer first, uh, yeah, second <laughs> and third layer third as well. So this is the difference between the two algorithms. Okay, so uh, the difference between these two ways of processing data, uh, so we will see how uh, it can actually influence the speed of searching for something, but in most scenarios I think uh, it doesn't really matter which one you take, uh, it depends on the on what you want to achieve. So when you saw that we are searching for the shortest route, uh, the first scenario when uh, we would be going depth first, we could just get endlessly lost in the labyrinth and never finding it. Uh, while the uh, breath sort of flooding layer by layer is something that we can actually use in searching for the shortest path. Which is why the demon has the breath first as an option and not the, uh, yeah, and not the uh, depth, oh no, not the, yeah, depth first. Okay, but in other cases, when we are, for example, just branching through this uh, tree of nodes and we eventually want to get to this one, uh, at to some degree it's arbitrary which, which choice we make. But uh, yeah, it depends on the task you're sort of doing. Okay, so up until now, we have uh, sort of shown all of this just visually. We have sort of described how we are going through nodes, and the task really will be if we can uh, write this behavior as, a, as an algorithm or as a pseudocode, because we will actually be coding this. Uh, let's actually have a pause now uh, for a bit to sort of uh, have a think about the, uh, the way how this can be written down as an algorithm. Uh, after the first pause, we will go into, uh, into maybe just writing it as a pseudocode and then maybe showing it, sort of running it here in slides as, as a demo, and then we will have Again, another pause, and after that we will uh, code this in a in a practical way. So we will uh, try it out in a Python notebook, and then see if we can uh, write it up as a sort of like write the uh, change the pseudo code that we design into code, and then see if it runs. So let's continue. Uh, we have ended with uh, with describing or like showing a very roughly how we would go through a structure like this and sort of just going bit by bit basically by uh, me telling you where to sort of branch so it was not uh, uh, yeah it, it was not really using a algorithm yet but somewhere behind it we could probably see how uh, there is some uh, sort, sort of the same structure used again and again 
And so uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, when we would parse through this tree or search through this decision tree of some sort. Uh, we would, uh, what we, what would we keep as sort of variables, and what would we do with it? And maybe uh, we can keep in mind this uh, simple structure where it's a tree which is branching, and so there are no cycles anywhere. But we probably should also like have a somewhere back in our mind some some way how to just plug in a graph there instead, which could have some paths which are leading sort of connecting everything. And so uh, the ad addition there will be relatively simple, uh, but we, uh, it will allow us to use it on any sort of graph as well. So uh, let's do that. Uh, so as variables, uh, I was showing this on the first sort of example, the, the first three slides to sort of say what is generally happening in any application like this. And so the one uh, so the things that we will be keeping will be the uh, variables telling us where we are right now. So the current node, uh, which will be changing as we jump through the structure. Uh, a sort of goal node which we can sort of compare these two and always say if we are there yet or not. Uh, maybe some list of already visited nodes. So if this was a graph with some looping connections or cycles, uh, this could give us a guidance as to uh, see if we are trying to branch into a new state or not, uh, and if that state has been visited or not yet. And uh, sort of maybe the most important uh, at every uh, be able to ask at every possible node in this graph or in this uh, tree uh, to give us a set of new possible moves that we can uh, uh, yeah that, that we can discover and so maybe also have a list of sort of possible moves that we can take at all and then also have a function that will tell us the newly discovered the discovered states and so let's say this possible states or possible moves is a list which is kind of expanding when we are exploring new things and adding into it and then we are sort of going through it through it through with it and then getting the states from there and then if we uh, exhaust it then we have uh, went through the whole tree of all the possible places that we could so this is sort of like our record of where we can go in the next turn okay so let's start drawing all of that as a sort of algorithm. Uh, so we will call these now with some uh, letters, just so it's uh, less confusing with, with having steps and everything as well. And so let's initialize this. Uh, and let's say that we are starting in A, the, the first node. And so, and then we would like to get into the goal, goal node, which is the W, sort of like win node or something. And so, uh, we would say that we are in a current node uh, and that uh, we have a goal node uh, to be reached this one and when we start our visited nodes are basically empty or, or just the a empty uh, besides the one that we are already in uh, but the possible moves are empty uh, which is something that we will have to fix so into these possible moves we will have to add the ones that we can take from a current node into the other ones, right, into the it, into its children. So let's see. In fact, we would probably start the uh, initialization like this, with uh, being in node A and knowing that from A we can go into B, C, and D. Okay? And so when parsing through this structure, we have to go for some next uh, move. And how we will choose it, we will always take the, uh, the first possible move here. So we will always choose this one, basically, the first item in that list. Okay, and so this structure is representing all the sort of open paths which we didn't explore yet. I guess this is sort of telling us where we have already been, so we are not returning again into it. This is telling us where, telling us where we are right now, and this is telling us where we want to sort of get. And so uh, you can probably predict that these possible moves will be expanding over time we'll be adding new things there as well but with every step we are sort of taking a new step from there and sort of taking that move as a as a as a as the action that we will move into the current node okay so let's do this uh, for the sort of to go from the step zero into the step one let's take b as our new current node 
So this happens here. Uh, we rewrite the current node into SB. Uh, we will add it into the visited nodes, and then the possible moves kind of lose that one from the start, right? This this is what happened sort of as as we moved here. Uh, we are also now revealing new moves, so E and F, and so we somehow want to add them here. Okay, well, now there is a question, how should we add them there? Uh, if we have, in the previous slide, if we have illustrated that we will always be taking the first item here uh, as our next move, uh, the two sort of approaches that we talked about, one being the breath search, uh, breath first search, uh, which would prefer going here, and the second one would be the depth first search, which would prefer going sort of here. So first here, then here, then here, etc. And so uh, this will be influenced by how we plug these two new moves into this, right? So if we know that we will take the first one always, uh, then we somehow need to plug this EF into this structure. So we can either add them before it or after it. Well, so what what will that do? Uh, these are the two sort of yeah. These are the two possible ways how to uh, change these possible moves uh, after reading EF. Uh, either we attach it or append it at the end, or we sort of prepend it at the start. Well, so what would these mean for our next move? So for our step number two move. So if you remember, we will always look into the first. Uh, node and take that one out, sort of uh, delete it from there and then use that as the new current node. So this gives us a sort of, uh, yeah, we, we can imagine what it would happen, what it would mean with the, uh, for, for, uh, for the, so, so sort of like which choice should we choose for which algorithm, right? If we are pre preferring depth, uh, in that case we probably would like to add this before because then the next first one that we add would be the E from here. Whereas if we prefer the breath, it, it should be this one, because we sort of want to first process the ones that we already had in that structure. So let's see it. This is the version one, where if we add it behind, uh, we keep the, the C uh, state as the, the next state uh, node that we would explore. And so that would be here. And it would sort of correspond to the uh, breath first approach. Because if we are explore like if we reveal any new nodes here, we would add them at the end again, and then we would still go to D and then continue with E, F, whatever we revealed here, whatever we revealed here, etc. So sort of like uh, appending it behind this structure, we would be going for the breath first search. While this is the second version where we would be uh, prepending it so adding the newly revealed nodes ef before uh, whatever we had sort of listed as our possible moves and in that case our first step that we will take the first item from this list will always be the the newest one that we can let's be explored and so in this case it will be e actually if we would process the e steps then we would reveal these two and they would be appended here again at the start, and then we would be again going for the sort of next one here. And only when these are all uh, used up, we would start getting back in the structure. Here, 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 all the way here. And then all the way after processing all of this, we would get to the sub subtree here, which would be under D. So yeah, so you can see how a very small modification of the code, if you prepend or uh, append the uh, the new states will sort of change the whole behavior of the algorithm. Yeah, they are really similar these two approaches as well, so it's not like a huge deal for the algorithm, but it will change how it uh, parses through these nodes, right? So I think in the yes, yeah, so I, I think I used the version two, so I chose to show the depth first algorithm, and so that one went for the uh, for the node E that became our new current node, uh, we have added it into the visited nodes list, and then we revealed two new lists, uh, two, two new moves, which we immediately add into the possible moves as a, uh, on its start. So we maintain the same strategy over the whole run, basically. And that in that case, uh, this was the step, step 
in the second step. Uh, the next step will get the Z as our current node. So let's do this here, and uh, it will not add it, it will not add anything new because there are no uh, children to the Z node. Or uh, in the terminology of, of, of uh, trees, we could say that this is a leaf, which is not adding any new uh, children nodes for, for the structure. So we know that we have sort of reached a dead end, let's say. Uh, okay, and so in that case, we are sort of returning in the structure above and above. And what this means is uh, processing the uh, possible moves from the previous rounds, sort of. And so the next one will be W, which is here. And at that moment, we can uh, check that the current node equals the goal node, and then uh, that we can stop. I mean, we can stop in a situation where we don't want to process everything in that node. So this would, for example, mean that uh, we found this one node, and then we want to return it, and, and then process uh, something with it. Or maybe, uh, at most, maybe we would like to know this path that we took, but we would have to save something else for this to be... Uh, possible. But this was sort of like animated uh, approach of using the algorithm that I was showing before, sort of step by step. Uh, so let's do the final abstraction step, let's say, and that will be to rewrite it into a pseudocode. So if this was our initial version uh, of, the, of the data structure, let's say, this is our map, basically, uh, then we have some current nodes. Basically, this is the step, uh, or this is the state of this whole thing from step zero, where we are in uh, node A, we uh, just have been to the node A, and we are adding, uh, or like the, the possible moves that we can take are B, C, D. Well, so if this is our, uh, if these are our variables somewhere at the start, then we can imagine this being the pseudocode of our, our sort of the way how we are processing this, right? So while we can make a move, uh, we will repeat something again and again, right? So while we can make a move probably means uh, while we have something in the possible moves list. Uh, let's take the first node from here. So let's take the B and let's make it the new current node. So basically let's move from A to B. So uh, the first node from a uh, possible move moves uh, becomes the current state. Okay, we can make that change. Uh, then check if the current equals the goal. So let's check if this, uh, if we are basically in the end. And if so, we could sort of like break this whole uh, iteration, this looping, and then get somewhere back, and then maybe print out a final message saying, "Hey, we, we won." Or uh, we could, yeah, basically. And what we still want to do is then to add the current node, so the now revealed B, into the visited nodes. So we should plug this one in here, basically. Uh, so that we know that in later stages we are uh, not revealing it again and again. Okay? Uh, so what remains is sort of to reveal or get the new nodes that we would get, export the new nodes. So add new nodes reachable from the current one, so the new current one from the B, uh, into possible moves. And so uh, this would be the, I forgot what I called them, maybe ENF. Uh, this would be the ENF, and then this this ENF would be editing this possible move structure that we have here. And so, depending on the uh, on the strategy that we choose, we either prepend it here or we append it to the back. Okay. So one small thing to add is that at this moment we could also be checking if the newly added node for all of them basically if they are not already in the visited nodes list, because if so, we can sort of skip them. In our in this case, uh, in this case it will never happen actually. But if uh, if we just want to find it, we can also skip them because we know that we have already processed them. Well, and so when this happens, it's basically uh, we can just jump back and then repeat this thing again and again. And in that case, this should probably carry us through the whole algorithm and then bring us from all the way from A all the way to the uh, B, which was here. And so at that moment, uh, we will sort of add some items into the possible moves list and end this loop. Uh, while we can move, make a new move, basically, uh, because this would basically mean while there are some items in the possible moves list, 
we can just change the first one again into the current node, uh, then leave the rest there, and then repeat this again and again, right? So I think, yeah. So I think this actually is everything that we would need for a uh, for for a to, to parse a tree and then find the data structure that we are looking for in there. This would not be enough probably for the uh, shortest path algorithm. So for shortest path, you would also have to sort of uh, save the the amount of steps it took you to get to some node. So we will not get into that with today's coding, but as an illustration, I have these two videos, which are uh, which I will later actually show on the new website. Well, this is the breath first search, which is like more or less. I think there is some other naming for this as well. This might be the stress algorithm. Which is there is some small difference by uh, how much time it will take, uh, and the approach there is to always branch around, right? So we are uh, this coloration means that we are uh, saving the number of uh, uh, the cost that it took us, and and the larger the cost is, I think uh, we are always trying out the the cost which is. Uh, smallest one and so in that case we are sort of basically branching a bit by bit so in this moment we will always try the, the new node from these possible nodes which has the lowest cost and so that the behavior which this has then is that we will always try basically everything in the circle around the starting node first and then this will change when we get into this sort of corner because uh, we are trying these out at the same moment as these and then possibly I think this is moment where just one uh, of these paths will sort of grow, I think. Okay, so this is not the uh, not the best approach in our situation because we maybe have some more intuition about these two positions than we thought, and uh, maybe just looking at this empty board, uh, the intuition that you can get is that as a, as a human you would just say, oh yeah, of course, like go from here to here. Well, start by this direction ignore this direction entirely maybe you would have to go here but or, or here which is something that you might not be able to tell uh by just looking one step by step well so what the a star algorithm is doing is somehow incorporating this uh, intuition that we have of uh and the intuition is hey take this direction first uh and it adds it into this uh into the values that are being saved into these uh, tiles. So the sort of cost that we save, which will influence the uh, the priority in which we explore the new nodes, will now be sort of included here. So as you can see here, we are sort of first taking the steps which are directly uh, moving in the direction of the, of the goal. And Basically, it will almost like go straight for it, especially if this is visible for the first one. So what this algorithm is doing is that at every step, instead of just uh, counting the cost, which is basically uh, the cost here is moving from the starting node to whatever node, uh, basically <clears throat> how much steps it took us to get there. In this case, we are also counting that, but we are also using a, a heuristic of... Uh, or like a guidance, sort of, of the aerial distance between uh, any newly revealed node uh, and the goal. And so in that case, we are sort of counting this, the path that it took us from the start, but also trying to sort of imagine what is the uh, distance to the end. So in this scenario, in this moment, we would want to go for this uh, next node way more uh, than, like, with, with higher priority than uh, by sidestepping first, sidestepping first. So uh, the effect it has it that, that uh, is that it will go straight for the goal. Uh, when there are some dead ends, it will then start trying out sort of like branching out, and this will repeat until it basically can find a uh, a solution which will go around this or around this, and then again sort of follow up in the straight path. And so. The important difference between these two algorithms is that 
this one is probably faster, but it also needs some more additional information. And so, for example, we somehow needed to define this, uh, this distance function between whatever node anywhere on the map and the goal, right? So in order to kind of have this guidance of, of, of being able to say, oh yeah, of course, take this one because this one will be the closest one to this, you need to know that this space behaves nicely and that there is something like a aerial distance uh, that can guide us there. Well, we are quite lucky that in the real world this sort of happens as well. And so if we look into a, uh, a real world map, uh, this also works. So, so this is just some sample uh, map I'm going through a CCI to date or something, right? Uh, well, so thankfully in the real world you can actually use something like a real distance to give us a uh, a heuristic is called it's called or a a intuition or something to tell us okay start with this direction. Don't try uh, branching out everywhere first because it would take forever before this uh, point would be actually reached. And so somewhere at the start of the slides, I was also showing like a situation when I was going from Czech Republic to the UK somewhere. And so if in that moment, if you had to branch with everything first, you would basically go mental and the PC would just like never finish this computation. So uh, the intuition there is that we can sort of use an heuristic of a aerial distance and so heuristic, what it is, is a, a function which will give us some answer, which may not be perfect, uh, but it will more or less uh, give us a sort of good guidance. And so why it might not be the best uh, answer is basically something that you could see here already, uh, which is this. There might be some uh, obstacles on the road. And so taking the uh, straight aerial path, basically, uh, doesn't always give us the solution because there might be some obstacles. So the same way oh, in, in this scenario where we have like a, um, there might be a river on the road or something and so you might have to take uh, <laughs> some path around it or there might be some, uh, there might not be any connections through some parks or something, right? There might be only some road segments. However, uh, this algorithm which is called A star, so here, this is something that basically they are using in, in some shape or form, I think they might be using some, some different versions of it as well, uh, to calculate, kind of, to, to have fast calculations for, uh, for, your, uh, for your map guidance. So on a, even on a very low power and low performance device like a GPU, you can already say, I want to get here and I'm here and it will sort of find you the path, uh, even though uh, if it was using some like breath first search, it would never actually evaluate it. You have to have some uh, smarter algorithms like this, which would, uh, which will guide you through that uh, with easier, uh, yeah, <laughs> with more ease. There are some more tricks that are happening probably at uh, when parsing through data at the Google scale level. So for example, I think the one I heard about is that they don't uh, evaluate all small segments. They will guide you, if you are going from a one country to another country, for example, they will guide you to the nearest um, high road, and then uh, they will have another map which is just using the super fast roads of like uh, highway connections. And so they will split the, the task uh, from uh, guidance from, let's say, Czech Republic to the UK uh, into three bits. From uh, basically, first step would be from my village where I am right now into the closest uh, high road, then using a completely different uh, representation of data uh, of just the high roads, map you through that, and then finally map you from the high road exit somewhere, I don't know where this would be, and then kind of uh, uh, get you the uh, local uh, distance from the exit of the high road into the location that you need to. And so by this trick, they are sort of speeding up the whole process even more. And yeah, this, this is how you can manage really huge data, I guess, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to do, do this even with like algorithms like A star probably. So they have to have many tricks like these. And they, in fact, somewhere at the end, they might have uh, give you answers which are slightly less uh, precise than what you want, would want, but the, uh, 
the performance that it has is, is better than basically than having to evaluate everything. So the small inefficiency there is sort of gained on the uh, on the fact that you get it uh, really fast. The answer. Okay, so we got to the moment of describing this as a pseudo code, uh, which is which will be uh, then rewritten into code, and uh, we got to the second pause. We end it here, and what remains from the class is just to sort of go through the code and then uh, rewrite the pseudo code that we were suggesting uh, into actual IPython notebook. So you can either use the link here or you can go to our Git page. So uh, yeah, basically uh, what we will be doing today uh, in the programming is just sort of applying what we talked about in the practical session. So I mean in the theoretical session. So basically just uh, rewriting uh, this parsing through a decision tree into a into a code. And to start with that, uh, we need to sort of represent the, the map or the data that we have. So uh, this is a tree, but we could also have a map of some sorts, like a grid world. Uh, but right now it's a tree. And as I was sort of saying before, we can have a dictionary which has all of these encoded. So for easier later coding, we can also just add the empty states as well. So the uh, the relation here is for a parent node, for A, you will get a list of all its children nodes. So if we create it and then uh, print, print a print the moves on like A or something, it will give us whatever the next steps on the new moves can be from A from here. So if we do this for B, it should give us EF. Awesome. If we do this for, uh, let's say, Z, it should give us nothing really because there are no new moves. And so the way how we implement this, basically how we save the data is uh, is really up to us, but let's say that this one is relatively simple to do, so that's why I chose it. So we have a dictionary of this uh, tree as a structure, okay? And if you remember us setting up some starting variables, uh, we do have the same here, so the current node, the, the goal node, uh, we even use the same uh, names for them, uh, we start the visited nodes, so from here, uh, with the current node already in it, and then we will look at the possible moves here uh, as as sort of answering uh, with this dictionary. And so if we run it, these are the first nodes, and if we run this, this is a sort of debug printout which will tell us, okay, we are in the current step, and we can take these steps. And so we are in A, and we can take B, C, or D, and the next one we are going to take is the first one in the list. So the pseudocode that we uh, we had from the slides <coughs> was basically this, and we can now sort of rewrite that from the pseudocode into actual code. So as a spoiler alert, there is a solution here that you can uh, look up. Uh, you can check it now or as well, or you can look it up later. Uh, yeah, the, the task is uh, for us to sort of write it here as well right now. So the algorithm is really just uh, stepping through the tree that we have saved and uh, we would like to visit every node in the graph and detect if we have find, found the, the final one, so the uh, goal node. Uh, it is up to us if we use the depth first or the breadth first search and uh, in this scenario we don't really care about finding the shortest path or even saving the path, but uh, I will add like a, I think I will add it even in the code to save the path as like a bonus option, uh, but for you there is, will be also a question if we want to add like a, um, uh, some way of keeping up the record of how, uh, what is the shortest path, what would we have to add to this algorithm that we are writing right now. And so 
if everyone was more or less uh, clear with what we are writing here, this is this code rewritten in, in very similar form. So while we can move and then continue with this, I will actually copy these three here. So so we have them some somehow sort of uh, we have them on the same screen. We, we don't have to scroll up and down. And let's say that this uh, debug will also be something that we will be printing again and again. So let's make this bigger. If we run it, nothing happens right now. Well, so let's start uh, writing down this code and then basically change it into a running code which we can use. So while we can move, basically we will say while uh, while there are any possible moves left, so why the len of the possible moves uh, is bigger than zero, which means while we have something in possible moves, basically go and step through this again and again. Uh, let's then load the current as the first node from the possible moves. So let's say that current is uh, possible moves zero and uh, by taking it out let's also say that possible moves is uh, the same but from the uh, sort of like chop out the first one because we have given it to the uh, current here so we are taking out the first one and then uh, saving the rest as the new possible moves and so if we would print it here, we are basically going uh, step by step from all the possible moves uh, through the list. So, so yeah, let's actually run it here and what will happen is that we will end up with a uh, with an error, but uh, we will say we are in B and we can take these steps. We will take C. Uh, we are in C and we can take these steps. D. Uh, we will go into D and we can take these steps, nothing. And because, uh, yeah, this should end with us. Um, yeah, yeah, possible moves is zero. So this is, uh, if there are no possible moves, this debug basically makes no sense. So if I don't write it, it will not have an error because now it's just stepping through everything. Okay, or I can also say if, basically I, I can, copy this, this check here uh, to just print it when we have something oh yeah if uh, yeah to print this message next one will be something uh, I can print it only if we actually have a next one okay uh, so kind of to, to keep track into uh, where we are uh, I can also start counting the step um, I guess print step uh, as, as the step i and then add one to it uh, yeah this is just sort of still it's a debug land I guess and maybe somewhere here at the end we can just yeah we will then later sort of separate it from the text so we can read through the output better but let's carry on with the pseudocode. Uh, so right now we are just always getting the first node from the possible moves. So we are sort of parsing through what we loaded it with at the start and just not adding anything new and we are sort of going one, 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 sort of going through all of them. Well, what we need to do is uh, follow up the pseudocode. So we would have to check if the current uh, is the goal one, right? I think I, I wrote it like this. And so if they are the same, I basically want to break this cycle. Uh, I want to stop going through. And so if this happens, somewhere after, I will just say handle uh, the final state. Uh, and, and so if even at the after the breaking, whoops, uh, I can then print something like print Ray, we reached uh, reached it. So yeah, so basically, if we break it and then we are in the current uh, in the goal state already, we can just print that we have reached it. So this would be getting this part of the of the pseudocode. 
So, uh, so sort of for record keeping, we would like to also add the uh, current node into the visited nodes list. So we have it something like this. So let's just append it at the end. The order there doesn't really matter. So let's append the new current node into the visited list. And then let's discover new nodes uh, from the possible uh, from our current node. So let's call it like new moves, and then yeah, let's look it up. Uh, so the way how we were sort of checking the new moves from any possible state was by was by doing this. So new moves for a state A are these. New moves for J are I don't know these, and new moves for B would be these. Well, so we can copy this, recall for dictionary, and then let's say uh, we would paste it with the moves dictionary and then ask for not just B, but basically for the current. Right? And so this thing should give us a list of uh, new possible moves that we can take. And so for all of these moves, we have to sort of check if, uh, if we can add them, uh, if they have not been visited. So let's say that let, uh, for move in new moves, uh, if, if uh, move not in, uh, Jesus, in <laughs> visited, so if, if we have not seen it before, we can then continue, right? And so we can do something. We can uh, the move has not been is it it yet or the note uh, let's add it to the list right so yeah so now uh, we somehow want to add these uh, new moves into our plant moves so into the possible moves basically and so as I was sort of say, saying in the in the slides, there are two possible ways of doing this. We are in this moment, right? So we have uh, been in A and then moved into, let's say, B. We have discovered two new uh, nodes, which would be the E and F. <clears throat> and we are sort of figuring out where to add these newly discovered nodes, either at the start of the possible moves or at the end of it. And so... Uh, let's say that we will start with the easier one to code, which is the uh, we will append it at the end of that uh, array. So let's say possible moves dot append uh, move. And so what is it? let's say append it, and that means means that it will be added to the end, which means that it will be the new nodes will be processed the latest. So let's say. Uh, uh, new notes to be processed the latest and this corresponds to the uh, uh, breath first search uh, because we will first explore the ones we, which we already have in other possible moves so uh, if we have these added we will first explore the ones which we somewhere like here if we have these edits, we will first explore uh, B, C, D before uh, going to the new ones. So I think it, it corresponds to this scenario, right? Uh, we want to sort of the one that will be loaded up next to be C, then D, and then all the ones that will be added later. Okay. So if you want to see the other version, uh, we will change it later uh, into the depth first as well. So let's see. Is this our pseudocode done add new nodes reachable from the current one into possible moves yeah I mean I think this should be it let's uh, let's sort of slow it down so let's uh, let's ask for an input which will be nothing <laughs> and let's just sort of wait here uh, to see the outputs and then see if it's working correctly um, I, I might have missed some steps so let's see actually so we are running it uh, Step 0, we are in B and we can take these steps, C and D. Next one uh, we take is going to be C, okay? Next iteration. 
we are in C and uh, and we can take these steps D E and F so now uh, it's in C but it and it can take D E F and the order of those is important because it will first go for D and then, then E and F okay so that's good as well uh, we are in D and we can take these steps E and F okay I think so yeah so it, this one doesn't really print out the currently added uh, edit, uh, steps, so I think I should probably move this debug somewhere down, so it's uh, printing out correctly what are the next steps, but still it's uh, it seems to be working well, because the next step is E, so we have seen A first, then B, C, D, A, which was A, B, C, D, A, A, B, C, D, E, F, Etc. Probably right. So we will go F. Uh, next one will be J. Next one will be I. F J I. Yeah. So this corresponds to layer by layer exploring this tree basically. So uh, yeah, let's actually let's stop it and let's get rid of stop it. <laughs> let's get rid of the slowing down uh, part of the code. And let's just separate the yeah, let's separate the state uh, states uh, by this line, and let's see what happens. So they go from uh, B, C, D, E, F, J, I, J, and then eventually it also reaches uh, W. Uh, at which point it still has some more steps to go, but it will not go there because we have reached it, and it will just say "Hooray, we reached it." Okay. Uh, if we what, what about if we ask for some nonsense goal, which is not there? I mean, it will try everything. It will reach to the moment of not having anything new to sort of parse, but uh, it will not write any messages. So let's say that if we end here, and if the uh, if the current is not the goal at the end, uh, oops, we will say uh, basically we can know. That we we uh, we have failed here, right? We have say something like uh, the goal node is not in the tree or something, and so this will be the final message because we have not found the goal. Okay, we can just for like nicer output, we can just add another enter. So we are splitting it, and well, basically this is it for the code, honestly. Um, Let's see with W again. Uh, this seems to be working nicely. Let's see uh, how to change this uh, from breath first search, uh, which we can see by, by looking at the steps that this was taking, right? B, C, D, this is the first layer first. Then E, F, J, I is the second layer first. And then this is the third layer. So let's change this. Uh, okay. Well, so this would be prepend it, prepending it, prepend it, <laughs> so this means new nodes to be processed uh, first. Um, I am not sure if I will remember correctly how to write it, I, I looked it up a little bit, so in solution there is a version, but let's see if, if this one will also work. So let's say that we are updating possible moves with the new move and then add the possible moves i think this might work this might not let's see uh okay yeah this works so this is us adding the new move uh before the array so basically we are prepending it we are changing the array by adding the new move before it and we are doing this move by move so it's a little bit different to the slides uh but we are we are sort of not adding the whole set of new moves because we are checking them one by one but uh, we are adding one by one in front of these. So let's see what this does. We are in B, uh, and then F, and then E, and then W. So let's see what this does. What, what did it do? A, B, uh, it went for depth first. Uh, well, so it, it, uh, it looked at the second uh, node first because we are appending them. So we appended E first, then F secondly. So this, this one became the new first one. So we went here, then here, and then dug into W. And so this is more or less the depth first search. 
And so if we would be looking for, I don't know, L, I think the output will be much longer here, right? Because we had to, we had to go, uh, we had to step through the list like this, 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 this probably, then this, I think, and then it ended. So let's see if it corresponds to that. B, F, E, W, then Z, then C, then D, then I, then J, then L, finally. Okay. Yeah, I think this more or less corresponds to this. Yeah, let's change this to V still, and I have heard a question. Uh, it's a repetition to how you can move between the nodes. Uh, what do you mean by that? Like, limitation to the size of the tree or something else? Mm. So, for example, if we had a, if this was a different tree where there would be like new nodes which are not connected to this main one. For example, if, if we cut this connection, there would be one tree here and then these nodes which are not connected together. Then there would be the limitation of not being able to jump maybe at these two. Uh, so the branches, uh, I can go. Yeah, 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 basically. So uh, like this is a very ni nice tree where everything is connected with everything. But let's say that uh, there was no connection from A to D. So if I forcibly remove D from the... Uh, from the children of the uh, of the node A, I am creating one tree here and then one tree here. Then it will not be able to even jump to D. So let's change this, and then uh, let's say that I want to go to D, and it will basically fail. There is the goal node is not in the tree, and this happens because I have split the tree into two bits because I have cut this part, right? And if I Remedy it uh, and then rerun it again. It should be really fast and tell me that uh, yay, the D is there and we have actually reached it. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, overall, does this make sense when you are looking at this as a code? Uh, do you follow what's happening? All of you guys. Yes, 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 awesome. And so there is one sort of like a question for you guys. If I didn't just want to write the uh, the answer of, okay, I found it, or no, I didn't find it. If I also wanted to say the path that I took, uh, do you have any idea how I would, uh, what I would have to save to sort of at the end also print out the path? Mm -hmm. So when counting, I could save it. Mm, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I I some somehow have to go, kind of uh, go around the fact that it's always like it's digging in different ways, right? So it's going here, then it will jump here, then it will jump here, then here, then here, then here, then here. So I what I can do actually is that I can save uh, these. Uh, backwards paths, so I can save the way how I can go from uh, how I got to V and I can save that I got there from E and then somewhere previously I can save that uh, I got from uh, into E somewhere from B and so to do that I will actually say create a new uh, helpful structure which will be something like backward uh, paths and uh, Basically, I can show it on the on the first bit here, and then say that uh, for all the possible moves in the first step, I can say for move in possible moves. So so here these three, I mean this only contains the three that I initialized it with, right? So the B C D. Well, so in the possible moves, I know, uh, I mean in the backwards path, I guess uh, I know that uh, I would like to add. A link from this new move uh, back into our uh, to the start where I started, and so this maybe seems a little bit strange, but I will print it out. 
Uh, possible moves are these, and then uh, backwards path are these, and then kill the processing. <laughs> well, so what I will get here as messages is that from the first state from A, I can get to B, C, D, and then I have saved that for uh, to get into B, I went from A. To get to C, I went from A. <laughs> to get to D, I there directly went from A again. So, if we do this not only here at start, but everywhere as well, everywhere else as well, if we sort of save this uh, this relation, whenever we are adding a sort of taking a possible new node, we will also save uh, where where did we go uh, into this new node from. So into the current one, if we uh, run this, it's set on, let's say, B, let's just run all of it, and we can then print the uh, the full backwards paths. Well, so here uh, we have saved all the paths that we took, so all of these sort of... Uh, all of the information of going from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. And so if we start with the one uh, where we wanted to uh, find it, so let's say if we start with the uh, goal, this one, and actually print it as well, uh, this will tell us which is the, uh, the, the node that we took before going into the win winning one, right? This this relation, and so if I repeat this again, uh, but instead of checking for the goal, I will actually check for the whatever this node was for the e, right? It will give me okay. I I cannot like I want to I want to go to to, to b. Uh, I mean to to the goal node. Then how I got there was from here. Then how I got to this node was from here, and how I got there from, geez, <laughs> from from this node was, uh, oh, was from here, right? And so this is the, the step. <laughs> I mean, I can also say that uh, back is set at goal, and that's uh, let's say uh, wa while 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 back is not a uh, starting node, right? let's say A, uh, then back will be will be sort of the, the one step before and we can start appending it here, so say something like path, and then at every moment we will just append the uh, oops the uh, the current back and then at the end we can just print this path and this should give us the uh, basically this order that I was doing here manually this should give it us to us automatically so e b a and so if I say that the path maybe starts with uh, I mean I can directly like do it once here as well uh, I will see that uh, I got to V from E to B from A, uh, like this, right? And so uh, I can then like go through it uh, in the other direction, or I can, uh, in theory, I could prepend it here, right? So I could say path is uh, back plus path instead of uh, appending. Uh, I can prepend. Oops. And now this should actually give us the, uh, the, the other order. So this is the path uh, I took when parsing through the tree. So from A to B, from B to E, from E to B, W. And so if we went here with, I don't know, anything else, let's say uh, L, and then run it, uh, and then run this as well, it will tell us from A to D, from D to J, from J to L. A to D to D to J to J to L, yeah. And so, because this was depth, uh, oh, 
I think breath first or depth first. Oh yeah, in this case this was depth first search. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. We can we could have also run this with the breath first. And also because we know that this uh, tree is always branching and it's without any cycles, we know that this path is the shortest one. So I can start kind of... This is the simplest sort of algorithm to go uh, searching for some shortest paths. Okay, so basically this is the end of the uh, practical session. Uh, this whole algorithm is here written slightly messily here, but if you open up the solution, I wrote the same thing again with a little bit more commentary before the class, and it's doing basically the same thing, and it's also tracking back the, uh, the path, and so this is basically the same thing. Uh, I think the only difference is that uh, before I was using the dot insert at position zero as a way how to prepend a, uh, a a move into the field or into the list, but otherwise it should work the same way. Uh, I will also save this as a solution and then upload it there to our Git. But yeah, this should be more or less everything. Uh, so if we get back to the slides, uh, yeah, this is us done with the programming pass task. Uh, there are a few links for those of you who would be interested in reading a little bit more about depth first search or breadth first search, and then a little bit more about the A star algorithm, uh, which you can see there is some like uh, game programming class uh, at Stanford, and basically. This is the end of today's class, so this was all the searching.